Okay, so today I'm gonna to tell you how you can win any battle that you face. Emotional, spiritual, financial, interpersonal, whatever kind of battle you're facing, the Word of God tells us how we can win. But before I do that, let me tell you how you can win maybe the battle with boredom uh, during the coronavirus. This is something my family did uh, the other day. And also we're playing games, this is called Code Names. My sister sent this game to me. Thank you, Heather. This is fun. How can you win any battle? First Samuel chapter seven is a story about how the Israelites were dominated by the Philistines. For over 20 years, they had lost the Ark of the Covenant. And finally, it broke their heart. And in verse two, the Bible says, Israel mourned and sought after the Lord. The first thing that has to happen if you're going to win a battle is that you need to have, number one, broken-hearted repentance before God. Until your heart is broken, you're not going to get the power of God. By the way, all three of the things I'm going to tell you today are how you can get God's power into your life to win a battle instead of your power. Your power isn't enough. If it were enough, you would have already won the battle. So number one, your heart has to be broken enough to say, God, I'm mourning over this and I'm going to repent. Number two is found in verse three. Samuel said to the whole house of Israel, if you are returning to the Lord with all your hearts, then rid yourself of the foreign gods and the Asherahs and commit yourselves to the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hands of the Philistines. The, the second thing that has to happen in your life is there needs to be radical amputation. In other words, you need to amputate out of your life any foreign god. They had Baals and Asherahs. We have other kinds of little idols that we keep in our hearts. Radical amputation is something that Jesus talked about when he said, if your eye offends you, cut it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. He's not literally talking about mutilating your body. He's saying that you need to radically get rid of whatever it is in your life that's causing you to stumble. So they did this. And then Samuel went to Mizpah and he said, God, we're all confessing before you our sins. And as they got to Mizpah, guess what happened? The Philistines came to invade. And as they're coming down, you would think, okay, the Israelites are like, okay, we need to figure out how to win this battle. Instead, in verse eight, here's what they said. They said to Samuel, do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us that he may rescue us from the hand of of the Philistines. The number three thing that has to happen if you're gonna win whatever battle it is you're facing right now, wait on God. If what you could do would have won you the battle, you'd have already won. It's not the arm of flesh that's going to win. It's the arm of God. And finally they understood, it's not our power. It's God's power that's going to win this battle. And Sure enough, God did come through. And he confused the Philistines. They were thrown into a panic. They were like panic-stricken. What are we gonna do for no reason? Because they had already dominated the Israelites for years. And God gave them a huge victory. Whatever battle you're facing, it might be in a relationship, it might be with your finances, it might be with emotions. Have you come to God brokenhearted over your own sinfulness? Have you amputated from your life those things that have caused you to stumble? And third, have you waited on God yet? Waiting on God is sometimes the hardest thing. Their temptation was to suit up for battle and so they said, no, we need to keep on praying until God does something and when God moves, then we'll move. And God did move. God caused a panic to fall on the Philistines, and they won the battle. I don't know what God's going to do in your life to win you the battle, but I do know this. These three strategies are laid out in God's Word in this chapter and all throughout the Bible. And if you will repent before God with whatever it is in your life that may not be right, brokenhearted, number two, amputate from your life anything 
that you know isn't right. And number three, wait on God. I know he's going to bring you the victory.